All right, so without further ado, I'm going to have our next panelist join the stage. Let's please gather our seats as we come in, but let's please give a big round of applause, especially because this is our last panel of the day and ending it out with BroccoliCon 2019 by welcoming Kadeen and DeVal Ellis to the stage, y'all. Y'all could do better than that. Welcome, welcome, y'all. Y'all look so nice. Thank perfectly you. paired for sure. He How does it feel? Me. He copied me, so I had some. No, I didn't. <laughs> no, I did. How does it feel to be in the DC area first and foremost? Have y'all been here before? Well, I've been to DC just in passing. I feel over the years for random events here and there. Um, I don't think I've ever like hung out. So maybe I should come in. Well, welcome, out. girl, to the yeah. DMV. Hello? Make sure we give them a good welcome. What about you? Have you been to this area before? Oh, uh, yeah. One of my friends used to play for the uh, Redskins. So okay. I used to come up often. So okay, cool. it was cool. I like the DMV. Okay. So we got a lot of your Instagram followers in the room today. Do we? <laughs> got a lot of your black. Ooh. Nice. Raise them hands. Raise them hands. Hey, Look, I told you. Hi. We got a lot of them in here, as well as some black love followers, too. So you know I have to kick things off in a short way. Can you tell us your love story? Well, like you said, it's almost 17 years in the making, so it, yeah, it is that long. A quite a long story. Um, well, I guess we can start by saying we both are from Brooklyn, born and raised, and uh, went to the now. same... Brooklyn? Okay, okay, okay. okay. Uh, went to the same elementary school, actually, so we date back to, like, elementary school days. Um, and he and I crossed paths several times in yeah. life, even though he left the school that we were in together. Um, eventually, we were able to reconnect in uh, college. Yeah. So he was at a scholarship banquet receiving a scholarship, and I was attending as a host. Um, I had just won a pageant, so I had my crown and banner on, and I knew mm. he was going to be there because I got the <laughs> list of, of honorees. So I was like, I might just shoot my shot tonight because I'm going to be cute. You know? <laughs> so I got dressed, and I was ready to see him. And when I got there, I saw him and his brother. You know, we kicked it off that night, and he had the nerve to want to leave, and I asked for my phone number. That's not the truth. So as, <laughs> That's not the truth. As he was about to get in the car, I was like, is he not going to ask me for my number? So I took it upon myself, like I said, to shoot my shot, gave uh -huh. him my phone number. It's called game, all right? So what I was <laughs> that's doing... So that's what these guys do? Yes. Yeah, so like they're not interested, is, but really you interested? You can't seem too thirsty. Right. Mm. I learned that from my parents. So mm -hmm. we spent the whole night talking to each other. So I was like, you know what I'm going to do is I'm going to let her think I'm not going to ask uh -huh. and see if she's going to, you know, imply that she would want me to ask. <laughs> So her way of implying that she wanted me to ask was to grab the program and say, since you taking man long, and then she just wrote her number in my program. And I was like, oh, thanks. Yeah, you know and that saying? summer it was crazy because I was working a lot, doing appearances and going here yeah. and there. He was trying to connect with me over the summer. Um, it didn't happen until finally I was getting called to attend a Leukemia and Lymphoma Society walk because I've always done a lot of community service and philanthropy work. So I was like, you know what? It's going to be at Hofstra that he was attending. I was waiting on my acceptance letter from Hofstra. And this so is before said, social media, girl. So there was no IG yeah. updates no. of location. Nah. No, yeah, no, his location was nah. not on. So I was like, okay. I just felt like it was fate. Like, what are the chances I'm going to be at this event? He just went to Hofstra. I was, just got my acceptance letter from Hofstra. So I was like, wait a second. This is too much. Divine. So I decided to just She's just leaving out all the parts about and, stalking uh, me. <laughs> because ultimately, she that's what she did. She a concise story. I, I know. You can't leave out the stalkerish parts, though. That's... That's right, part of ahead. the conciseness. Because he likes to say this. He gets the kick out of it. Go ahead. Tell I me. do, right? Go ahead. Uh, we discovered upon conversing uh -huh. that we live five blocks away from each other, right? Uh -huh. So she, could, she couldn't find the book that I gave her my phone number. And since I was calling her and finally gave up because her sister, Sakari, who was... Shout out to Sakari. Shout out to Sakari. My hey, sister. Who pistol. was seven at the time. Who well, I thought was you when up. she first came in, by the way. So, <laughs> now, this is the crazy thing. Back in, you know, back in the day, I'm, I'm dating myself. But this is when you had to actually call people's home. So I used to call the house, yeah. you know, ready, you know, yeah. ready for her father to answer the phone. No, it's her sister. <laughs> Can he not hear? Bing. She doing my hair. Click. So I was like, damn, maybe her sister, she's sending her sister to curve me. So I stopped. I was like, oh, you're not going to keep curving me. So then I'm chilling there. I didn't get no phone calls. Finally, she calls my phone. I said, yo, how did you get my phone number? She went to thewhitepages.com. Yeah. <laughs> Found out where my parents lived. That's Drove by I feel like to hello. confirm because she was like, yeah, that's his car in the driveway. <laughs> Drove by. Went back, called my parents' house with this fake story. Hey, 
Uh, Miss Ellis, this is Kadeen. I don't know if you remember me. My mom was like, I remember you. She was like, yeah, I lost the Val's number. Do you mind giving... Now, nah, my mother just... And the thing is, I was talking to another young lady at the time. My mother just dis, uh, disowned the other girl. I was like, oh, yeah, you can have the Val number. Gave her my number, and then she transferred the hospital with me, and then the rest is history. Long story. Now we got three boys. <laughs> Women so are just smart. Just already explored. Resourceful. You resourceful. Right. I'm resourceful. You resourceful. You know, social media makes it so much easier to find people now or know yeah. where they're going to be. But let me tell you, if I could do that back in the day, and this was like, what, 2002? Then yes. you know, right. I'm, I'm the real answer. This was before <laughs> Facebook. Bucket. Hey. Wish. We got three boys. How many years of marriage are we in now? July It'll be nine. nine. It'll be nine. Wow. Yeah. Clap it up nine. for that. Almost a decade. Yeah. Yes. And then 17 years total of being together. Yep. Yes. Dating is not always easy. No. 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 What is the first advice that you can give to people in the room about what commitment truly means? We're going to take it there. I think commitment is very parallel to transparency. I think that's what has worked for DeVal and I. It's difficult for us. We've noticed through the years of meeting at 18, you know, starting to date at 18. I hoped and you would hope that someone at 18 is not the same person at 23 or at 28 or at 32. You want to see growth. And it was really difficult for us to be able to grow as individuals without stifling each other while also trying to be together at the same time. So there were many times when he and I were just like, you know what, this is not going to work because yeah. he was on this path, I was on that path, our wavelengths were not in sync. And um, it was really hard, you know, but being honest and the brutal honesty that we share, I think is the biggest thing that's worked for us. Because even though it may not be something that I want to hear necessarily, I know that he always has my best interest at heart. Um, and that's what, for me, commitment is, at least within, within a relationship. Uh, for me, I think it, it, it's a little bit different, mainly because I think the commitment starts with yourself. You have to be committed to your truth. And I think um, this is one thing that we both did a little bit backwards, was that in the beginning of our relationship, while trying to be committed to my truth, I was trying to be committed to who I thought she wanted me to be. And a lot of ways I lost who I thought I wanted to be. And vice versa, we both did that. We were yeah. young kids, no one gives you a, a playbook to relationships. Somewhat codependent so, a little. Right, somewhat. We were oh, very we were codependent. Mm -hmm. like, yeah. uh, too codependent. And you lose sight of who you are as an individual. And I think that if you lose sight of that commitment to yourself, you'll, you'll find throughout the relationship that I don't like who I am anymore. But if you stay committed to yourself and you allow the person to make the choice to continue to be with you while you're committed to yourself, that love will truly grow because now you don't have to be a fraudulent person. Right. You can be who you want to be every single day. And if she's still here, right. then, then I know that this is real because I'm being who I am. And I think that's a lot of what you see. Right. I get to be myself every day with Kadeem. And we give each other the choice right. to wake up every day to want to be here. There's right. nobody shackled to each other. You know, right. we, we decide every day to wake up and to be committed and to work at it. Um, so yeah. that's the best piece of that's advice. Whether on those good or those bad days. Yeah. That's really motivating, inspiring. Has marriage made things easier, more difficult, or does it feel the same since you guys been dating? <laughs> Keep it a hundred. Well, you sound like you got an answer. Let me hear. <laughs> um, marriage definitely made things a lot more difficult. And this is, be and then I speak to one of my best friends, Bilal, who's here. Marriage is a business. You know, like, once you decide to sign paperwork and become one with someone, it's no longer a, I'm upset, I'm going to live at my spot where you live at your spot. We're here, uh, we do our taxes together, we have property together, we have businesses together. We so have whole we, human kids together. Right, we have, <laughs> we have three part. whole kids together. So yeah. it's like, once you become married and you make that decision, the decisions then become business decisions, not personal decisions. So when you exist in a marriage, you can no longer just say, you know what, I don't like this person, I'm out. You really have to consider, what might I gain or lose by severing these ties? Or what might I gain or lose by making this decision to do something that my wife doesn't like? Right. And that's the difference between marriage and just being in a relationship. Right. You know, it becomes more of a business. I mean, the opposite side of that too, I think that there's the good side to it is that there's always a partnership. You know what I mean? Some, the, mm. the whole two heads are better than one situation, like Absolutely. that definitely Absolutely. Um, applies here. Because like I said, you have somebody who you know is rooting for you, rooting for your success. And his dreams become my dreams and vice versa. So it's nice to have somebody who you know is going to be able but to help prop you up sometimes. Not, you not to that. cut you off, but we were that for each other when we weren't married. 
I'll give you I'll give you an example. In college, when I was pushing towards possibly playing in the NFL, mm -hmm. she made my meals. She she iced my shoulders, my back. She took me to the doctor. She sat out there when I was having surgeries. We weren't married. Right. When you were when you were pushing to go towards your uh, your master's degree, mm -hmm. we were up studying together. You know, when when you were going back and forth while we weren't married from, from Michigan to Brooklyn. We did right. those things when we weren't married. That's true. We were you invested know? in each other. We were invested. As human beings and as people. Exactly. And I guess that made the, the, the love and marriage part um, easy. Right, yeah. or even knowing that this is the person that I want to be yeah. with. Mm -hmm. Let's get into the business side of things. Ah. Let's talk a little bit about career aspirations. You played football and thought you were going to go into the NFL. You, as you said, were studying your master's and thought you were going to head towards higher education and doing more of that. but. You both took a turn, and with digital media and social media booming and growing, and you guys really seeing that from the ground up from when you were in college, because mm -hmm. like we said, there were no locations, no Instagram back then. Right. To find your man, um, tell us a little bit about who you guys wanted to be when you first met and how you got to where you are now. Well, I, I mean, I always knew that I wanted to be in front of the camera. I went to school. I went to Hofstra University um, for broadcast journalism. Hey, hey. Hey, hey. All right. And then I got my master's in speech communications and uh, rhetoric and performance studies. So I always knew I wanted to be in front of people. I've always mm. been comfortable in front of people and speaking. Um, so I said, you know what? I want to make that my career. Um, I decided to stay away from hard news after working like in traffic reporting for a little bit and you know investigating the hard news style. I felt like I had a little bit more to offer the field in terms of just my personality I and also too that. doing the, the the performance side of things. I realized that there was like this this actor brewing in me as well. So in order to not stifle myself and just be in that one lane, I decided to to do my master's in the performance studies where I was able to then kind of create, um, write and kind of produce my own content. So that was, that was very early on in my, um, my schooling and my career that I decided that I wanted to be on camera. Um, and also I'm a makeup artist by trade. Um, so when DeVal retired from the NFL, there was a period in time where we had to move back to New York after the recession hit. Uh, we lost a lot of money in the stock market and I had to lean on a trade to be able to help make ends meet while we were able to pick up the pieces. We had a ton of money that we invested in properties. We did all of the right things with our money, quote unquote, to then have so much of it lost in investments. So I had to just pick up, put, you know, pick up my brush belt and be like, you know what, I'm gonna go be a makeup artist and get this health insurance shit up and everything. Cause we made about to say, yeah. still paying off. I was like, what we ring. about to do? She had this big ass ring because I was playing in the NFL, and she went and worked in Kings Plaza. Just like, and, and I'll be honest, That's everybody real. knows if you're if you from the hood, Kings Plaza is the hood mall. Man. And <laughs> I was in Macy's at the Mac counter, like, Macy's. we got to do this for both of us. You right. know, we had just gotten happen. married. And let me tell you. That's a real ride or die right there, for real. <laughs> you ain't making money right now, I'm going to find a way. It was, and, and, and she was pregnant. Because we had just had out, we just got married. Right. We were having Jackson, and Honey when you retire baby. from the NFL, they don't continue your health insurance. So we needed health insurance. Right. So at this time, it was like, yo, baby, we need health insurance. I'm mm -hmm. starting another business. I don't have health insurance starting my own business. Right. So and I always supported the fact that he wanted to start his own business. Right. Deval is probably, his work ethic is through the roof, and he's super ambitious. So I'm like, I know your business, whatever it is, is going to work. And I know you want to be an actor as well, but you're not about to be a starving actor either. She said so that. what we're going to do she is I'm going to go work, yeah. and I'm going to hold it down while you figure out your business, and we can get that off the ground. Once that off the ground, then I can kick back stay at home with the baby for a little bit, and then we juggle. And, and, that's, the, and that's where that partnership, two heads are better yeah. than one. Yeah. Because shout out to trades, right? When I first retired from the NFL, I needed to make money. So I started doing sports performance. And it took me six months to get my certification. But uh, since, I had the, you know, since I had the experience being in the NFL, and I studied exercise physiology and kinesiology, now I could charge people to train. And I was able to build a lucrative business. And the reason why I think that's important is because as an artist, a lot of times you feel like there's no other way for me to do my art if I have a nine to five. But I was able to pick up a trade and make very good money picking up a trade. And it's important for a lot of millennials to understand that because some people, college isn't for everyone. Yeah. And, and you shouldn't have to go into debt to live yeah. your dream. Yeah. Picking up that trade cost me $600 to study exercise physiology, kinesiology. I started training people and was making six, making more than six figures, no, not more than six figures, making about what? Five or 6,000 a month mm -hmm. just doing personal training, cash. And if you're an artist, you know that that cash, you can make that stretch a lot longer because yeah. now you can put this into other parts of your lifestyle and your business. Mm -hmm. And um, also us pushing each other. I remember one day she woke up and 
she was, you know, she was crying. I'm like, what's happening? She's like, I put my resume into King's Plaza three times, and ain't nobody called me back. So I was like, well, then we need to go to that motherfucker then. <laughs> she was like, what? I said, get dressed. Yeah. It's like, I, she I got put on dressed. all black. I was like, I'm going to look the part I want. So I put on my put all her black. Put in the car. Anyone who knows Mac knows that they have on the all black. Yo. Right. And they got the face beat. So I was beat. like, what about to right. be is, yes. I put, her, I put her in the car. We drove by King's Plaza, and I sat outside in the yep. car like this. I said, what happened? She was like, they got me for an interview. <laughs> I'm like, see? See, like, that's all you had to do. Like, I'm a Sagittarius and a procrastinator by nature, so I'm hey, like, all right. Well, I'm a Gemini. I can understand that. We like sister. No. I can understand that a little bit. Right. Deval, let's dive in a little bit more into your career aspirations. So my first cousin is Omari Hardwick, who is also an actor. He was also an athlete before he ever got into the acting world. You guys have been programmed to be team-oriented and, you know, physically exerting yourself all the time. I mean, you live, breathe football to the very end, and then... You have to all of a sudden retire. That's the hard thing to grapple with for starters. Tell us a little bit about NFL and then going into acting. Realistically, it was a lot for some athletes. It wasn't a lot to me. My college roommate, Sharif, will tell you, we sat up in Hofstra. The NFL was never my dream. I never thought I was looking at me. I'm a small guy. I'm not big. I, it'd be different if I'm 6'5", 2 So how do we make it? Uh, well, I'm very fast. Very fast and very resourceful. Playing in the NFL is not always about your physical attributes. It's also about you mentally. Playing in a receiver position, I learned all five positions where other guys only learned one. The more you can do, the better. Um, I'm also like my wife says, I'm a hard worker. So the funny thing is I made the team not even playing receiver. I made it playing special teams, which means I had to run down and just hit people. A lot of people don't have that toughness. I'm from Brooklyn. The, the choice was if I run down and hit these dudes, I get 16000 a week. If I don't do it, I'll make 3000 a week. Let me get I'll three like, Advil. Yeah, baby, I got some Yo, ice this. when you get home. <laughs> ben Gay, icy hot. Facts and, Whatever. And we gonna be good, it'll heal. Right. And the funny thing was, <laughs> when we were in college, I would sit up with my college roommate, I would sit up with my girlfriend at the time, and I'd be like, yo, I'm gonna be on TV, I'm gonna be an actor, but I can't just be broke. So what we're gonna do is I got my degree, if I make it in the NFL and I make a practice squad, I can at least put a down payment on a two-family home, we could live in a basement, we could rent out the other two floors, and the home would pay for itself, and at least we won't have no mortgage. That was my mindset. That was foreign to me, because so, I was like, I don't know what you're talking about, but all right. And before Airbnb? Right. So for me, it was like, okay, I made it in the NFL. I'm making more than just practice squad money. Let me just put this money aside. After my third year, I had five, four knee surgeries. Uh, I developed sciatica in my lower back. I was just kind of like, yo, I really don't want to do this anymore. So for me, it was never my dream. I was the kid that watched the Super Bowl every week, but then I watched the Oscars with my mom. Like, I was, I've always been an artist. I draw, I paint, I dance. Like, I've always been into the arts, not really into just sports. So when it came time to do something different, you know, the, the Lions said, hey, we're going to go in another direction. And I was just like, that's going to cut me? I was like, all right, fuck yeah. Um, <laughs> I'm out. I'm retiring. Like, realistically, I was like, I wasn't going to let that be my, my demise. Like, oh, I didn't make it as far as I wanted to. I made almost a million dollars playing professional football. After taxes, that's less than half a million dollars. I don't know if Still you know a bag. that, but you, you, make, you lose a lot of money. We invested in property, uh, invested in the stock market. The recession hit 2008. I lost a lot of money in the stock market, lost a lot of money in investments. And the one thing I, I regret was that I did not have fun because I was so worried and focused on the next move that I didn't embrace the moment I was in. And losing all of that money while not having fun made me realize that there's certain things I can and cannot control. And when God want to humble you or put you in a position, he going to find a way to put you there no matter how you plan for it. So that taught me to take chances on myself. Forget just being like, oh, I, I got to do it this way. Nah, I want to do TV film. I'm going to start my own business. The money that I had left, I invested in my own business. My, I leaned on my wife. She got us health insurance. She helped pay the rent. Uh, my boy Sharif, we were living together. There was a couple of months, he paid the rent. And I'm not too proud to say that you gotta rely on your community. The you gotta village. rely on the people around you because if it weren't for those people, the same people you see here supporting me now, these were the same people when I was going through my darkest moments were right there. And I told my wife, I said, yo, I'm gonna make it a TV film. I became an actor, became SAG eligible. Once I became SAG eligible, I got my insurance. I told her, yo, do not work at the mall no more. You don't have to, I got my insurance. You start your own business. 
she started her own business, started making more money doing her own business than she was making for Mac. Wow. So one thing we learned throughout the process was if you invest your time and your resources in yourself, you can make more money in a quicker amount of time as opposed to just punching a clock for someone else to make millions. She took uh -huh. all those resources she had working at Mac, and she said, I'm going to just start calling these people for, for personal makeup sessions. Yeah, and I was I'm, super strategic with it, too. I started as like a 16-hour artist, then I became a full-time artist within like a matter of six months, and then I was like, I'm going to get into management to see how the business runs so that like way I that. can look at like the money, the profits, the losses, the revenue. I want to see all that back office stuff, and then also to gain some sort of plan. leadership skills and, and, and you know, have that on my resume as well. So when I did all that, I was very strategic with how I moved through back. I'm like, I'm not just gonna sit here and do makeup all day at the counter. I wanna be able to learn the ins and outs of the business, so. That's so inspiring yeah. and so real. Let's talk about how, you know, at the same time that you guys um, were building your career, social media was taking off more than ever and it's continuing to grow and get bigger and it's actually allowed us to create our own careers, create yeah. our own money. How has social media helped you guys make more money, create more of a name for yourself, but how do you keep it real on these platforms at the same time? How do you balance that? Well, I mean, for me, it was, it was just understanding culture, understanding people. As an artist, I watched other art forms and who were successful in other art forms. So take, take uh, rap, for example. I watched the Jay-Z's, I watched the 50 Cent's, and I watched these men be shut down by every like, major record label on their grind. So they were just like, you know what? I'm gonna produce my own content. I'm gonna put out my own album. Reasonable Doubt comes out. 50 Cent put out his first album when he was dissing. I forgot the song where he was dissing everybody. But um, I know uh, Jam Master Jay had got a hold of it after he produced it on his own, and that's what kind of blew him up, and they created empires from it. So I told my wife, I said, listen, I'm tired of going on these auditions, and this is the truth. As an actor, I go on these auditions and I book the major role, I book the role on Power, uh, The Blacklist, Mysteries of Laura, um, who else? Tell them about The Blue Blood. That's what I'm about to tell oh, okay. them. I, I booked all of these roles on major TV, which <laughs> helped my profile, right. but I played a criminal, an ex-con, an inmate, mm -hmm. or someone in the lineup in all of those roles. Yep. So I said to Kay, I said, yo, every time my son watches me on TV, I'm a criminal or I'm killing somebody, mm -hmm. or I'm behind bars, and I'm like, I'm just tired of doing it. So I had a big audition for Blacklist, no, for Blue Bloods. Blue Bloods, yeah. I go in there, and I'm looking at the two roles they auditioned for. One role was for a doctor, one role was for an inmate. All the inmates were black and brown men. Wow. All the doctors were white and Asian men. And I walked wow. out. And Kate was like, how'd it go? I said, I didn't, I didn't stay. She said, what you mean? I said, I can't do this anymore. Yeah. So she was like, what is your plan? I said, well, you know, Instagram does video now. At the time, they were doing 15-second videos. I was like, you know what I can do is, I can do like a sitcom of our family to show them me in a different light, more comedic. Because I'm black and I have tattoos and I have a little bit of a build, I always got athlete or inmate. So I said, I want to show them me in a different light. Mm -hmm. So then I started producing the content, 15 seconds, then Instagram went to 60 seconds, and it allowed me to use my creativity more. I started shooting from different camera angles, doing cuts, or uh, adding music, and it kind of showed me in a different light, and then it took off. Right, and then my sister had recommended vlogging. Um, she mentioned on YouTube yeah. that she had, there were families that she followed, and I didn't even know that was a thing. For, at first, I thought it was kind of weird. I was like, <laughs> you want people, I like follow people's fa like, lives? What do they do, you know? Right. She's like, but y'all are hilarious, y'all. You have us cracking up on a day-to-day -day basis anyway, so you might as well do it there, and it can be like an extended version of your Instagram. And I was like, all right, I guess. I mean, I wasn't sold in the beginning, I will tell you. And I think that's in part, too, because the way I was raised, my family's from the West Indies, Jamaica and St. Vincent. You don't put your business in the street. Like, what you mm -hmm. do in your house stays in your house. So when he was telling me about, like, what we were going to start putting our lives out there, I was like, no. And then Mama Bear kicked in. I was like, I got these babies to protect. Like, right. no. Um, but what we then decided to do was make it almost like scripted content in a way. Mm -hmm. So everything that we put out there is strategic. It's controlled. Um, it's something that we have a discussion about. So he'll, you know, in the in the sense, be the director and the writer, and I'm like the producer, and he'll always run something by me. Right. He'll want to put something out there sometimes, and I'm like, no. And then other days, I'm like, all right, we can work on that, or we'll just work together to kind of build a script around it. So it's great to have the control and be able to say, we're going to create our own narrative and right. in turn change culture that way. And, and to answer your question, it was important to me to keep it real because I looked at all the other art forms. All the other art forms that had successful people told their story, their real story, and they were unapologetic. If you hear sure. rappers tell their stories, or if you watch filmmakers tell their stories, they're telling real life events. 
they're not just going out and finding other people's events and just putting it out there. They're telling their So I said, you know what, I'm an artist. And storytelling and shooting and directing and acting is my art. I need to tell my story right. through my art. Right. And it, it just being the more real and, and right. gene not generic, uh, genuine allow people to get an insight to who we are. Right, and so. we understand that art is subjective. Like, we put it out there and it's for people to digest and take it however they'd like. Right. Not everyone's gonna like the content we put out. Some people may think it's corny, some people may not, it may not be their thing, but that right. has never deterred us from still creating the content that we want to put out because we feel like that way we can be true to ourselves and be genuine. If right. it's not, then it's a facade and then Facts, the and you're only focusing about pleasing the people who really are riding for you, you're loyalist at the end of the yes. day. Right. Who cares about, you know, the people that you know, have something to say negative yeah. or things like that. Like, okay, unfollow me, next. <laughs> so I totally can agree with that. How has putting um, your personal life, sharing more of your family and black love opened doors for you because of what you put out there on social media? Oh, it's been a benefit more than a burden, right? Oh, absolutely. 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 Like it's, it's, been, it's, it's pretty much like our, our own portfolio or like our resume that's virtual. It's out there for millions of people to see. Strangers are seeing it. People can share it. I think that's the biggest thing that yes. we've taken away from social media is that the ability for people to be able to share your content and looking at the insights and the, the analytics around it and the engagement, you can see what people really like. You know, we don't concentrate on negative comments per se to then deter us from doing content. We actually look at the engagement and things that people like. So we've noticed, okay, people really like when we just have these like authentic moments where DeVal's holding the camera mm -hmm. up and he's like, yo, okay, it's doing X, Y, Z, okay, drop it for him, you know, little funny things like that. We say, okay, people really like that. So we know, all right, right, we'll give them more of that if that's what they like. So, you know, we really control the content in that sense. How many filmmakers we have in here? Or content creators? Raise your hand high. How many artists, period, artists? I, this is the one thing I'm going to tell you about, about that I've learned in the last couple of years. Do not wait for anybody to validate what you're doing. Mm. What social media has done for me mm -hmm. was proven all the people who told me not to do it that they were wrong. Yeah. Because we were contacted about reality TV before Instagram started to blow up. Just because of the story of a professional athlete coming back to Brooklyn. And every time we went into these meetings, they would say, There's, you know, do you guys argue? Do you fight? Do you and your brother fight? And I was like, yo, we're not gonna just put something out there. Mm -hmm. And he was like, nah, there's no risk there. Right. So all they kept telling us was there wasn't enough risk in our family and that mm -hmm. people wouldn't want to see it. That's crazy. But we, thank and God I'm about for- I to risk my family in real right. life. So, well, that's, we weren't about to do that, so. But now, sorry, not sorry. Now, yeah. thanks to analytics, analytics has proven all of those people wrong. Yeah. And just, you know, not to brag, but we've been contacted by every pretty much major production company and network about doing our own scripted and non-scripted show. We've both tested this year for uh, a... Yeah. We've tested this year for, this is our first pilot season since this all started, and yeah. we both tested for a network show. I was offered a role in a TV show. Kay's been interviewing nonstop, and the funny thing is she has no acting experience official, mm -hmm. but now she's getting in the rooms with people who would have never looked at These her before. These eyes That's so that true. are now looking, I, right. I had no idea. And it's no yeah. longer about who you know, it's about who knows you. You know, Facts. and people are now coming to us and saying, hey, I think she's capable of doing this. Right. They're willing to take a risk and they're willing to say, right. we'll give her a chance. Um, and that's all we were asking for in the beginning. Right. That's exactly. the reason why this all started. It's like, you know, like I did back in the day at King's Plaza, like, oh, just sending my resume in and hoping somebody calls. Right now I'm delivering to your doorstep, to your phone, right. the content to say, hey, look at me, I can do this, you know, take a chance. Right. Why did you guys decide to be on Black Love? How did that come about? And why is Black Love special? Oh, well, the funny thing was, they, they reached out to us. We didn't, we didn't even know what, what the show was. Right. It's funny. Cody Oliver and Tommy Oliver, they are the creators of the creators show and, and also the directors, producer, the husband and wife team. So Cody will tell the story whenever we do a panel with them to promote. Um, she'll be like, oh, you know, I was on Instagram. I had just had a baby because their middle, well, my middle son, Cairo, and their first son, Brooks, they're like a month apart. And she said, I was, you know, sitting at home breastfeeding or something, and I'm looking through, and I see this girl who just had a baby like a month before me, and she's in the hallway doing sprints while her husband's holding the newborn baby. Like, girl, <laughs> why, why are you even running? You just had a baby, you know? Um, and, and, and she'll laugh and say, that's when she contacted us. And at the time, we didn't even know what 
we were embarking on. We had no clue. We had no clue. Deval she was just like, said she was oh, doing a documentary. She's doing a documentary. And that's another thing, the power of creating your own content. So she mm-hmm. felt like there was a void. There was a deficit. We're not seeing black families in a positive light. Right. You know, raising families, raising children who love each other, who right. are displaying that. Especially there in the reality deficit. show setting. Exactly. There, I hope you guys sign on a deal soon because there is not really, I mean, there's a few out there, but right. nothing as big as, as we know, nothing the big family running things. Right, right, right. right. So she felt like there Won't was a mention void. Names. Yeah, and she was like very passionate about it. So she said, I'm going to create this show. I'm going to just do an entire season and see what happens. So she, she interviewed did. Viola Davis and her husband. She interviewed a couple other people, Tamara Maury and her Tamara husband, and husband. Um, for, the first ep- for the first season and Owen picked it up. So that's, again, the power of creating your own creating content, content and shopping it around and pushing it. Then it got renewed for a second season, and that's what the one Deval and I were on. So I right. honestly thought it was just going to be like, oh, she wants to interview us for like an for online documentary. Content. We had no clue. No clue. And she came to the house, and then it ended up being on OWN for the second season. And um, for me, I, the reason why I think black love is important, for the obvious reasons, you know, it's not enough on TV. But for a more deeper reason, I have three boys. And I see the way black men and women are dehumanized daily, and that's because they don't see us on TV as humans. Mm -hmm. And I feel like if they were able to see us, just love each other, not be extraordinary at anything, but but just just love each other. That's my wife, these are my kids. We hug, we kiss. (laughs) Like, I know it sounds funny, but if you would see the DMs that I get from people that say, wow, I didn't know, you know, this is God's honest truth, wow, I didn't know black men, you know, stayed in the home. Or I didn't know black fathers were around. Like some people from other countries just genuine because you life, you you see, when you see TV, you just think that that's life. You really don't know that that's not everything. So true. You consume what you consume and you think, oh, that's how all black people act. You know, that's how all white people act. So for me, doing black love was important and showing it because I just wanted to show, like, listen, we ride for each other. We've been together since we were 17. We've had our ups and downs. We argue, we fight, we kiss, we make up, we make babies. You know what? We are human. <laughs> you know? Can't forget that part. Right. Because, but, I mean, it's, it's, it's it's honestly, I feel true. like if you start to see black people as human, it'll be a lot harder for you to take a young black man or a young black woman and drive them into the ground right. and put a bullet in them because now you see us as humans, not as just some caricatures right. that you see on You're TV. Like, and oh, this little women. black boy, somebody at home loves them and cares for them and loves right. them, and they have a village behind them. And a lot of times, people don't know what they want until you give it to them. So we're just going to start giving it to them. Like, we, that's a devout. Let's just start giving people this content. And that's what people wanted. There was that void that was filled. Yeah. Before I get into the Q&A portion of this conversation, tell us a little bit about family. Tell us a little bit about your boys and, you know, their names and their ages and how motherhood and fatherhood has changed you guys for the better, especially for those in the audience who are thinking about starting a family or who want children one day. Oh, my baby. So we have Jackson, who just turned eight recently. Yeah. Cairo is two and a half. Um, recently potty trained, so shout out to Cairo. Yes, yes, yes. Thank God. Thank you, God. Ain't nobody trying to change dump campus no more. And the way these kids eat, too, I'm like, what are they going to do when they're like teenagers? They're gonna yeah, they're going to eat you out of house and home. House and home. And then Kaz, our baby, our surprise baby, who actually, when we did Black Love, um, when they came to the house to interview us, Cody and Tommy, Cairo was only six months old, and Cody will always say, I feel like you might have been pregnant when we did the interview, yeah. <laughs> or like something we did there during that interview had y'all all lovey-dovey, where y'all just like, right. oh, you know, we're in the moment, and here came Kaz. So Kaz is our youngest, and Kaz is um, a year and a Aww. couple months. A year and a couple months, yeah. I won't be obnoxious and calculate, oh, he's like 32 months, no. Right. Like, <laughs> One of those moms. change. Yeah. Um, and motherhood has completely... Um, given me a sense of, well it, well, it holds me accountable. Like I said, I'm a Sagittarius, I'm a procrastinator. But when it, you have children who are depending on you and they are counting on you and they're watching your every move, it really forces you to level up and true. get your shit together. Be your because, best self. Yes, because I want so badly for them to be able to see that. I talk all the time to Val and I, we've spoken about this with our manager, how much your childhood impacts and, and creates the person that you are to this day. Um, whether it's the good stuff or the bad mm-hmm. stuff, the hurt, the pain, the obstacles. Um, And I really look at my children now kind of, you know, introspectively like, wow, how am I going to in turn affect them and them as individuals and adults? And they all three have different personalities. So it's really trying to do this like dance of how am I able to pour into these children what they need to make them be them best selves, their best selves. And our parenting styles are very different as well too. Um, And Deval will always say sometimes to me like, but but they're boys, this is not how boys process things. And I'm 
like, well, I'm the only one in the house with a vagina, so I don't know. You tell me. You know what I mean? And he's like, you shouldn't have done it this way. But the good thing is that we're a united front, so DeVal will never undermine me in front of the boys. Mm. Um, if Jackson gets a little mouthy, he'll be like, hey, are you listening to your mother? And I appreciate that when he can, you know, kind of give mm. that dad forcefulness, which is amazing. Um, but I always lean on him because I'm like, yo, you're, if my children can be half the man that my husband is. Oh, you better stop. I I, I get you pregnant. Well, baby number four come. I, I, I am protecting myself. I am not leaving it up to you this time. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm, of course I want my children to be a thousand times the man's devout is, but I'm just saying that to say, like, I lean on him a lot, especially Thank with you. three boys. Thank you. To, and we to know what it's that. like to raise black boys in America today, and it's important for them oh, to have their right. father more than ever. Right. Yeah. Yes. And, um, Fatherhood changed me a lot. Um, growing up in a house, being the oldest, there's a lot of pressure put on you as the oldest. And you start to become selfish because when you're the oldest, everybody is worried about the younger ones. So you focus on yourself. Mm -hmm. Then being in a relationship, you know, while you're in a relationship growing with someone, you still start to focus on yourself because it's just me and her, but I gotta focus on me. Having kids is that unconditional love to focus on somebody else. Yeah. Like, you know, I don't worry about Kadeem because she's an adult. I worry about my kids. So th those are the, probably the only people in my life that can do anything and my love will never change for them. But what that also did for me was it gave me accountability that every decision I make now is gonna impact, uh, impact them for the rest of their life. Everything I say, every way, the way I look at them depending on what they do, that moment is gonna carry them throughout mm -hmm. their life. And I, I, I always tell this story which was like a moment for me as a father. Jackson was five, he was going to first grade, and um, not first, he was going to kindergarten. And I was dropping him to school, and me and Kay had, had an argument before I left the house. Mm -hmm. On our way, we always listen to the radio in the morning, but then we have five minutes where we turn the radio off, and we talk, we give our special five, and then he jumps out the car. This morning, we had an argument, so there was no radio on in the car, period. I'm quiet, he, you know, I'm just trying to decompress. He's right. quiet. It was just him and Jackson. I was me, and, me, and, that was me and Jackson. <laughs> and, and that's our time, too, me and Jackson's time. So he's sitting in the car. He's quiet. I'm quiet. We get to the car. I mean, we get to the, the school, and I'm a little bit late because we were arguing. And, I'm, and he's like, Dad, you got to do the special five. I'm like, Jackson, you got to be on time for school. So then he jumps out of school. He jumps out of the car. He runs in. He goes inside. Now, mind you, I'm not thinking anything big of it. I'm like, I want him to be inside. Like, he's not going to be late for school. We can't do our special five. So I go to pick him up from school. The first thing he says when he comes out of school is like, you know, he doesn't run out as normal. He just walks out. So I'm like, you know, what's up, buddy? You know what I'm saying? What's the matter? He's just like, are oh, you still mad at me? And I said to myself, like, if, if I could have punched myself in the face that day, because even thinking about it now is getting me emotional. So I'm saying to myself, the only thing I have to do as a father is to make sure that my children have the tools to be successful in life. Now, rather than him being in school focusing on being the best version of himself, he's probably in school thinking about why daddy is mad at him. Wow. And I'm like, That's real. wow, and, and Jackson, like, wow. Jackson, the love, like, he idolizes and, like, the Val and Jackson, forget it. Like, yeah, I'm he's... chopped liver compared to the Val. <laughs> chopped liver. I wouldn't say chopped liver because uh, they've probably seen the videos. They're all over you. Yeah, they are. But I'm like Kyron the superhero Kaz, right though. now. My homies. Yeah, Kyron and Cassidy, they, <laughs> yeah. they rock with you. But Jackson, I'm like his superhero. Yeah. So it just taught me, like, dang, that little, that little 20 second moment changed his whole day. His whole day. And if I'm not cognizant of how I spend those moments with him every day, there can be a lot more days where he goes to school with that and he has to take that with him and it can affect how he Perfect. functions. Yeah. It can affect how he affects other people. And then it can affect how he, uh, when he meets a woman. Right. How, how, what kind of dad are you going to be if I'm not giving you the tools to interact with people and not project what you're going through on other people? So it just, for me, being a father taught me so much about who I am as a person. Because mm -hmm. even in that moment, I had to think about how many times I probably projected my issues on my wife when she had other stuff to do. And vice versa. You know, I'm upset about something and she got to go for an interview, but I'm pissed about something, so I say something, oh, no, no, in my face. Now she goes into the interview thinking about, you know, what did I do to DeVal rather than me just empowering her to be the best version of herself. Mm -hmm. I would have only learned that being a dad. Wow. Because, you know, when you're a person walking around, yeah. you don't have that unconditional love for anybody. When it was just me and her, I'm like, right. she a big girl, she deal with it. Yeah. Yeah. When it's your kid, though, totally it's, different. it's like, man, like I messed that up. So being a father really helped me accountable. Yeah. 
We have time for quite a few questions. So who wants to be the first person in the audience? Don't be shy. You want? I just want to know, um, where do you guys pull from inspiration? Because you do create a lot of content, both of you together, I father both of you. Mm -hmm. And then also, you mentioned scripting. How do you keep the genuity when you're mm -hmm. scripting to put together content? Mm -hmm. Well, the funniest thing is, when you create from your own life, there's content everywhere. Always content. <laughs> but it does take a gift to find the humor because we want to push humor as content. The right. humor in what a normal situation would right. be. Or maybe a, a, a bad situation or a stressful situation, it. yeah. So yeah. what will happen is, is I, and I'm very deliberate with my content. I tell, I tell Kay, if we want to be professional actors, we have to be consistent with our content. We can't just take days off, weeks off, months off. We have to be consistent. We want to be paid and we want people to appreciate what we do. We have to deliver consistently. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, yo, we got to do a, a video a day. And in the beginning, Kay was like, um, To this day, some days, I'm like, Deval, I am not, like, nope. why? I'm like, every, I'm like, every day, we must do a video. Right. So right. what I'll do is I'll wake up, i see something happening, and I'll be like, yo, that's hilarious. Right. And she'll be like, what? I don't get it. I said, trust me. I see it. Mm -hmm. It's hilarious. Mm -hmm. I'll sit down. I'll go back to the computer. I'll write up a one-page script, because I know anyone who's a script writer knows that one page equals a minute. Mm -hmm. So I'll write up a one-page script. I'll sit down with her. I'll say, what would you say if I said this to you? And it should be like, I would say this. I said, it's funny. <laughs> I write it out. We go back and forth. I say, this is the script. This is your motivation. You just came in from this, da, da, da. And we, to us, it's our acting exercise. I was about to say, he's like my acting class. People ask a lot, like, where do you study? I'm like, school to oh. now? Like, at home? Because <laughs> he always has, and he's just like, what are you channeling? What are you pulling here? And this is only for, like, the scripted content. Like, some, some of our skits you can tell are like, oh, it's like a little performance, like right. the cameras are set up. But then we do all have those organic moments where we're just, like, out, right. and DeVal has the phone up, or I have the phone up, like, look at this dude right here. Look what he's doing. You know, right. and those are funny content. It's, it's, that's community content as well for us. So, so I just, yeah. I just, I've always done this in my whole life. Like I've looked around, I'm like, oh, that shit's hilarious. Yeah. Somebody was choking back there on something. Everybody else was trying to tell them to be quiet. I'm like, that shit would have been hilarious if we filmed that. <laughs> that's just the way my mind works. <laughs> Yeah. That's just the way my mind yeah. works. So that's how we get a lot of the content. Right. And I told Deval, too, I said, um, you know, and I agreed. I think our manager has said this to him recently. Not to just say that he's an actor. Like, you are a creator. Like, you create content. You are producing and directing a lot of things. And even though it may seem minuscule because it's a one-minute Instagram video, but people get it, which is a good thing. And yeah. you always want to make sure your audience gets the point. They get the punchline right. or, you know. So it gets to be a lot sometimes for me just because I may not be in the mood or, you know, I got the kids tugging at me or y'all see y'all probably all see me with my hair looking crazy or like just rolling up, waking up in the morning. I'm like, can I at least like wipe my eyes? I'm sure they That's can the tell best I didn't part. brush my teeth yet. That's the Through best the video, part. You can tell I didn't brush my teeth yet. The yeah. crust, that crust right there is the best part. Oh Lord. <laughs> And he'll be the one to zoom in on it. But the thing, too, like, we don't take our t ourselves too seriously, if you nah, couldn't tell. Um, and we've, we've learned to just have thick skin. This is just the industry that we're in. So we have thick skin. Not a lot of stuff bothers us. So we're like, all right, whatever, devout. And, you know, the way I look at it now, which has helped me, is like, you know, I don't have a nine to five where I punch in and out and I have a commute every day. But we have the flexibility with our children now to create content around our schedules. So we have a content calendar that is linked to Deval and our, our, our phone, along with our manager. She helps to get in the brand partnerships. And I think and it's important, my bad, lay it out. not to cut you off, mm -hmm. but the brand partnerships, because I think that it should be explained to people. People always ask us how we monetize mm -hmm. on Instagram. Mm -hmm. This is what you need to understand when you create content. When you create content, you have to create content that is consumable by everyone. But most importantly, the people who spend money. Right. So when we create content, we create content that's safe enough that everyone can see it and view it. And brands would want to say, you know what? I'll give them $5,000 to put my bounty here while they do their video. Mm -hmm. So then you shoot it where the bounty's here. You still see the content, but subconsciously it's like, oh shit, that was a bounty commercial. Mm -hmm. But you don't realize it was a bounty commercial because right. it was within, and that's how we create. That's how we started to monetize Hello the Fresh. content. Yep, Hello we, Fresh. The Hello is Fresh one we do is all one the time. of. We started to build these relationships. Shout out yeah. to our manager Denora. Yeah, she's built relationships with all of these brands by working for so many years, and, and brings us and brings our content right. to the brand. So the best thing we have now is we have leverage to networks. Mm -hmm. So now it's like, nah, you're not gonna take my content and produce it and cut me a small check because I already know how much money I'm worth. I have the analytics and I have my bank statements of how much we made over the course of a season. Mm -hmm. 
So you can't cut me anything less than what I already make. Right. And that type of leverage allows us to walk into these meetings and say, yay or nay. And we're very careful um, what partnerships we do engage in. So we don't want our page to become flooded with just like, oh, swipe up here and right. use my sponsored promo content, code here. Right. And it's like a bunch of sponsored content because then we lose the organic nature of our content and of our pages, which is what our following genuinely loves. So we've turned down a lot of partnerships as well. Got to say no. And you have to know when to say no. And, and um, is, does this work within the context of our household? Does this work within the context of our content? If it doesn't work, no matter how big Much, the check yeah. is, it's just not worth it for us. Right. You that's know? important. Um, so, yeah, that's the way we are able to keep our pages as organically as possible, but also, to not become just influencers, but we can still say, this is Deval the actor, this is Kadeen the television host, or the Kadeen right. the actor, and that way people will still see us for that and not just feel like they're being bombarded with all of these right. different sponsored contents. Next question. Any back here? What's next for you guys? I'll get you. But what's next for you guys? Uh, well, we do have a podcast coming out. May yes. 15. Everyone, take your phone out if you haven't subscribed yet. <laughs> this is, did you subscribe? <laughs> Great. Shut up. You guys can take one minute, take out your phones. Um, whether you have Apple Podcasts, um, the name of the, the, the podcast is Dead Ass with Kadeen and DeVal. Because I always New York, York all the way right there. And it's very New York and it's very Brooklyn. So I'm like, even if we were to leave New York, like we always will have that piece of us, a piece of Brooklyn with us, piece right. of New York. So it's Dead Ass with Kadeen and DeVal. That's two words. Um, so if you're with Apple Podcasts or Spotify, um, CastBox, wherever you listen, you can search for it and subscribe now. Um, and we go live. May 15th. May 15th, yes. May 15th is our first yes. episode. So that's what's next looming. Yes. Um, and then what else? A makeup, makeup to Break Up is a web series. Anybody watch Makeup to Break Up? No? The web series? Um, well, Deval uh, and I are both. Uh, we're both uh, recurring uh, roles on Makeup to Break Up. It was picked up by BET.com. Yeah. So it's going to be now on BET.com. The they're in season three, so you can catch up on it and yes. then be ready for when it airs um, in June. Kadeen's up for a role on Young and the Restless. Oh, yeah. I just auditioned for a role in the Restless. Yes. Yes. So send the good juju out into the universe, you know, hopefully yes. that'll... <laughs> and DeVal just booked a role. Yes, on he a, did. a new scripted show coming out on BET. In BET, so. yeah. Yes. So you can look out for that. They're filming now, so... <laughs> Thank you. Okay, this is a two-part question. Okay. The first part of the question is, at what stage did you realize you needed a manager, and how did you get a manager, number one? Mm -hmm. So you can start there. I don't want to... At what stage did we know we needed a manager? I don't and think we knew we needed one. <laughs> Um, when my manager said, yo, y'all need a manager. No, um, <laughs> to be, to be we, honest. We, I, we didn't, I didn't know per se that we needed a manager. I knew, manager, I knew because I was tired of taking the emails. Yeah. I was tired of doing the paperwork. He was doing a lot of that. I was that, tired yeah. of being talent and negotiating. Because mm -hmm. when you're talent and negotiating, they always try to talk you down because you're yeah. talent. Right. Sometimes you got to send in the pit bull, mm -hmm. right? And um, the pit bull knows how to go and get the bag. Mm -hmm. So now I don't got to be the bad guy. Right. And the, the, this is my manager's favorite line. <laughs> How much do you have to engage the Ellis's? Right. Because it's a nice way to tell people what is your budget, but we're not doing anything for free. Because if I was a brand, I would try to get everything for free. Right. But when you come out with how much do you have to engage the Ellis's, it already sets the, the tone. They're not doing anything for free. Right. And we found our manager organically. We were working on a campaign. She was working from the brand side, so she already knew what it took. We had a great conversation, her and I on the phone, shout out to Denora. She wanted to meet with my wife mm -hmm. out of respect because she's a, a young lady and my wife is my wife. Mm -hmm. So they met. We, we also met together at another event, the Blavity 21 Summit as well, um, right. Atlanta last year. So she and I had connected, Deval and her had connected, and then right. she said, you know, I want to see you guys again. And then she had us engaged at um, Essence Fest Essence last Fest. year with Shea Moisture. So we were she in courted us. She courted yeah, us. Yeah, she was like a money. nice little light dance. Miss some money. She's but like, then, we got a little bag here. Right. There's more bags where that came from. <laughs> but the best thing was, and I'm like, All right, well. she said, give me six months. Yeah. There she was didn't no say, rush. No sign pressure. on the dotted line. No. I want this. She said, give me six months. If you're excited about what I do, mm -hmm. then we can talk moving forward. Oh, yeah. And after two months, I was like, yo, we need to sign with her. <laughs> because it was, it was, first of all, night and day. It was night and day. Night and first day. of all, I would stop. I don't even look at the emails anymore. Right. She handles the emails. She comes to us every day. Mm -hmm. We, we have weekly meetings. We're on the right. phone every day. Right. This is what I have. This is what I have. This is what I have. Right. Yay or nay. Let's discuss right. this. She's the one that presented the podcast to us. 
I knew nothing about podcasts, but sometimes you need a manager that can kind of push you in a direction right. to where you can grow. Because you don't know what, what you it. don't know. You just yeah. don't know sometimes. Yeah. So she, you know, pitched this to us. We got it moving, and from, from there it's just been taking off. And it's it's going to be a year in July. Right. It's going to be a year in July. It's going to be a year in July. And it's just like, she's a great person. Like, when you just know when someone's a great person and just genuine and authentic and, yeah. you know, can foresee the, the beauty in you and, not, and, 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 foresee the, and see the potential in you is like a really great, mutually beneficial situation, yeah. so. And she's yeah. a hustler, like us. She's a yeah. hustler yeah. from New York. Right. Uh, and our families love her, you know. Yes. Her and my yes. sister decided to get a king-size bed versus two double beds at the hotel because they're like, we'll sleep together. <laughs> <laughs> See, look, look at Sharif in the back. Sorry, I'm putting... <laughs> okay. Sharif, like, what? Like, yeah, this, like, yeah, yeah, this is the second yeah. part. The second part is, okay, so now that you've been working with brands, and have you ever been in a situation where a large brand or corporation has tried to lowball you, right? And in that situation, <laughs> what do you do? Because, you know, as an influencer or in general working in this space, once you work with a brand, you're attached to that brand in a sense. So all the competitors are like, I ain't messing with them. You let know. me tell you something. Yeah. Let me tell you something. Away. This we is why away. you have a manager, right? I don't ever have to be the bad guy. Should Neither she answer for us? <laughs> Denora, has, there's been a brand recently who was giving us a very large paycheck, but wanted the rights to license for a year. And Denora was like, hell no. Right. If and I you was want like, to, you, you don't have to sure though? The, I know, and this was, <laughs> Because I put the bag on, like I was trying the bag on, and I was like, ooh, I'm, <laughs> it was like a bag bag. It was a good, ama it was a good was amount like, of money. Yeah. It was a good amount of money. And Denora was like, God, I don't She's think like, you no. should do it. Because once you set this precedent that you're willing to do this for this, you'll never be able to get anybody else to pay what your value is. And they always lowball. Always lowball. Black and brown. All the time. Influencers. All the time. Talent. All the time. So Kadeem was just like, parts get way more. So. All the time. So Kadeem was just like, you sure you want to do? We can use that I money. Like, I said, listen, I'm a firm believer in this. Yeah. If you count your pockets, you miss all the other money that's out there because you're too busy counting your pockets. So I just said, no, we walking away. Walk away. And literally, literally two days later, she came back with a bigger bag with a brand that wanted to only license us for that hour that they wanted to be on our posting. Yes, girl. And that's, and, and Shall that be these are not right. lies. <laughs> right. These are not lies. You have to set the precedent and do it this way, or else you'll be in a rat race, yeah. and you'll always be at the bottom. And brands talk, mm -hmm. oh, how much you paid them? I got them for this. Mm -hmm. And then that's what happens. So now yeah. they let it, they know. Like, no, nah, don't come away with that. Another thing to, um, to keep in mind with brands, if anyone out here does content creating, don't let the brand try to coerce you into changing your content. Be true to what it is. There's been times where we've created content and they come back and say, well, can the Ellis's go back in and not say this or say it like that? And we're like, no, this is the content we've created because it is organic and authentic to what we do. There's a reason y'all came over here and wanted us to do it. Hello, so remember Hello Fresh? do it the way, yeah, that's what Hello I'm Fresh, about. so yeah, Hello like, Fresh was just like, they can Kadeem not script. twerk in the, in the video? <laughs> and Denora was like, do you not watch the Ellis's? That's all I do. When she cooks, she twerks. You want That's, her to cook I and not twerk? I get excited about like, food and whatnot. So I'm like, and they were like, they were like, they were like, okay, if you, so, if you say so. Yeah. That was in the second. <laughs> After that video, they gave us a year-long uh, brand deal. Right. So at That's first, you nice didn't want us to do that. Yeah. We did it. It was successful. <laughs> then they came back and was like, okay, I see why. Right. The engagement was great. Right. This is who they are. You just gotta stick, you gotta be strong to you yourself. Can, yeah, you and whatever your yourself. content is, don't let them swell you. There's a reason yeah. they came to get you in the first place, so deliver the content accordingly. Yeah. And don't be afraid to stick up for yourself and stand up and say, no, I'm not doing it this way. Your script is corny. I wouldn't say it like that. <laughs> it's not colloquial. Like, it doesn't make sense for us, so. Right. Know your worth and value, for sure. We have time for one more question, quick question. First off, we love you guys. Thank you for uh, being here. Thank you so much. Thank, thank you, you so much. We appreciate you all. We <laughs> yes, really we do appreciate all you guys. I mean, so young, so beautiful, and you're raising these beautiful children, so thank you. Um, my question is, I follow you guys, and um, I'm inspired. Just talk a little bit about, um, we know that you're a beautiful couple, but you also are individuals, and you stand on your own. Yes. Mm -hmm. I mean, you need each other, but you don't need each other. So right. can you just talk about how you guys support each other as individuals? Mm-hmm. Um, one thing I will say is as far as supporting my wife as an individual is that I've always, in my mind, told this woman 
that she can be bigger than any woman on television. I told her that from the beginning. And my manager can attest to this. When we go into meetings with brands, I always push her as her own, as well as pushing myself. Right. The Ellis's is not a married couple. The Ellis's are DeVal and Kadeen. Kadeen has a certain skill set. Push her skill set as well as pushing mine. And she does the same thing when she goes into brands. Mm -hmm. Hey, you know my husband, he also does. And it's, it's important to let people know that because we don't want to always be this. Right. You know, like I don't, I don't want to always be on a TV show playing DeVal with Kadeen as my wife. Right. She doesn't always want to host as, oh, this is Kadeen Ellis, DeVal's wife. Right. You know, so it's important that we continue to push each other and help our skill sets. I know she's a way better host than I am. I don't like to host. Mm -hmm. I curse a lot. Um, <laughs> my diction is bad. I know this because I'm from Brooklyn, but she's great at hosting. So I yeah. always push her in that direction. This actually happened when we were trying to come up with a name for our podcast. Um, and they were doing like something, something, like the love hour with the Ellis's or like something with the Ellis's. And we were just like, oh, we don't want all of our content to always be around love and marriage because that's not right. only what we do and that's not only how we define ourselves. So we wanted to make sure we had something that was kind of generic that still stood for who we are and where we're from. And it's not dead ass with the Ellis's, it's dead ass with Kadena Naval because that we were very strategic with that. Right. Um, and I think it's easy for me to support and, and to pour into and to be there for DeVal as the individual because he's a doer. Like if this man says he's about to do something, he's gonna do it and he's always been like that. Since college days, you know, he had to walk onto Hofstra to be able to make the team and prove himself. He had to then walk onto, you know, uh, as Lions, a free agent yeah. to the Lions and prove himself. Like time and time again, he's always had to be in a position to prove himself. And recently you had said to me like, why can't everything, why can't anything ever just be straightforward for me? And I'm like, yeah. well, that's just not, that's not the way God wants you story. to achieve it. It's not your story. It's not your story. And there's always, I think the most successful people have a story about, behind them of a struggle or of the obstacles. Like, it's not going to come easy, but when it comes, it's going to come, you know? So it's easy to really support DeVal because he, whenever he sets himself out to do something, he does it. And I admire that so much about him, and I pull from that. And mm. that helps me now as an individual to, to be the best version of myself. Thank you, baby. Ah. And I, I'm a doer. You are a doer. So when I tell you that I, I am going to get you pregnant. I told you baby know, number four would come. Yeah. I'm going to do that. Some, somebody cut his mic, please. Can <laughs> Kadeen and DeVal, thank you so much for keeping it real with us thank today. You. Thank you for being genuine, for sharing your love, your wisdom, faith in family, and, and, and how to make some coins, too, in the process of that. We appreciate you so much. Another round of applause for Kadeen and DeVal Ellis. Thank you, guys. Thank you, Brittany. Thank, thank you. you. Yes.